Door Guys, episode 50. This is Davis. And Vinny. This is Sean. This is Tyler. <laughs> You're a little slow on that one? <laughs> it's been a while. You forgot what you're supposed to do? I'm a little slow always. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. We haven't been here for a while. It's been about a month that we took off for the holiday. And uh, today we have our very special guest who... So stoked. Yeah, super <laughs> excited for. Well, they talk about you on uh, literally every comedy podcast out there, I'm pretty sure, because they want more water. It's because <laughs> I've been around for a long time. That's all. And that voice is Colleen Quinn, our beloved boss and leader here at the Funny Bone. I'm here with 50 and Nifty. How <laughs> happy. You know, I'm just going, wow, a 50 and Nifty podcast. Bring it. We, we were excited we got to 50, and we're like, we got to make it special because we don't know how much further we'll be able to make it. I'm here. One of the goals I had when we started this was to have to be able to be, a, uh, I guess, respectable with air quotes enough podcast to have you on. So, oh, wow. Well, you hit it, Davis. I know, right? You hit it. Was it was 50 great. episodes. Come on, let's get. I didn't realize this was 50. I just thought, it is. Like, oh, yeah. hey, cool. We're having Colleen. Welcome back, yeah. Ty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably been since, what, 35 since I've been on? It's been a while. You've been on the road killing it out there, huh? Let's put road in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we were gone, we had New Year's and Christmas and all that. Do you guys have a good good holiday season? Yeah, it was good. It was busy. It wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, I was here for a couple of those holiday shows, which were fun. I got to do uh, New Year's this year, and it was my first time running sound on New Year's. I thought you had done it before, no? <laughs> I have not. Huh. Uh, I think Scott has done it the last couple years. Gotcha. That you weren't able Ooh. to do it. Uh, <laughs> <so> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't been to a show at the Funny Bone, um, the late show, we ring in the new year. We count. We bring up the comics on stage, and we count it down and everything. And there is a video of Times Square that we have to play. Yep. And uh, I got it all set up like you told me, Vinny. Yeah. And I, I paused it like you told me. Yep. And uh, because uh, it's on East, it's on New York time, the feed that we use. So you have right. to pause it about an hour early. I unpaused it at 1130, like you told me. Yep. It ran for about 15 minutes and then it timed out and it would only give me the very end. Oh. So it was only like a couple people kissing. It was only a minute long after it timed out because I guess it had been paused for two. I don't know what happened. Weird. So then I have Colleen back there and my wife and somebody else was back. Maybe Tanner was back there too. And I was freaking out because we literally had maybe 10 to 15 seconds before it was yeah. countdown from 10. And I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to tell you, from my perspective, huh? it's cold, it's New Year's Eve, yeah. it's probably my 32nd that I've had New Year's Eve in the Funny Bone Comedy Club, so I'm like, figure something out, Davis, I, yeah, you I don't care if it's 10 after, we'll do 10, 9, 8 after, <laughs> these people don't know, I don't really care. You, you should have went up and dropped your balls. <laughs> On the, the stool on the stage. I, did, I didn't think of that one. Wow. <laughs> did you do the countdown at midnight? Yes. Close. It was, it was close. very close. close. It was very close. Maybe a couple seconds off, but it was right there because I found one on YouTube that uh, I fast for. It was the was same it thing. 2021? It was the same. That's no, it was 2022. So great about live comedy. It, it's like you have to ad lib. You have Every to, time. Oh, yeah. You have to go <laughs> spur the moment. It's cool. We did it at 1130 in Des Moines. Really? What? Yeah, the eleven forty maybe. They were just like, "Oh, we're just gonna do an early one. I'm not gonna try to hold wow. people here till midnight." Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, so no wonder they stayed. <laughs> <for> your <laughs> <time>. <laughs> you're telling me you're telling story. No, of course they stayed. <laughs> <laughs> they were out of there and home before midnight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nobody wanted a refund. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. That's crazy. No, it was just yeah. They're they, all cool with it. Yeah, nobody, it was just... They just thought it was midnight? It was a, it <laughs> was they a got to their car. No, there was no even, we didn't even try to fake it. I mean, oh. it was just like, okay, we're going to do the countdown now <laughs> at 11.40, and we did it. All How right. unauthentic of you guys. I know, right? Dang. <laughs> I, I, no, that, but that was the night it stormed bad there. Well, no, we it was to. actually worse here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No excuses. I smacked we a hung curb. In here. I smacked a curb. That day, just trying to go to Des Moines before I even left town. 
Oh, geez. And then found out I bent my rim. Oh, wow. Like Ooh, that's today. not good on a Yaris. I've been driving on it for like two weeks. Yeah. Well, that's like, like tin foil rims anyways. <laughs> that's, you've been driving on it for how long? A couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's on the way to Grand Island. I was like, it's vibrating bad. <laughs> and I your axle. got out to check my tires, and nope, the rims bent all the way in. So I <laughs> still haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna be getting a new car soon. It sounds like. Ah, uh, yeah, it was only three grand. You, <laughs> the old Buick wouldn't have done that. <laughs> it's a good thing that thing's gone. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was uh, it was crazy back there in the booth for a couple minutes. I was I, was I, I can out imagine the good. panic that set in. Well, I, you know, the uh, one of the only places in the world where I get the most nervous is in that booth for some reason. <laughs> and I've said it before. I think it's because I, f- I feel like the pre- like the whole show like revolves around the little things that I'm doing there, even yeah. though no one really gives a shit what I'm doing in there. And so like I'm like in my head, I'm like I'm ruining New Year's <laughs> Eve for everyone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was panicking, but it, it went off. It, 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 it ended up being smooth, yeah, it was and just, it was everyone fine. had a great time. I, I would say because of the storm, I think, and a sign of the times, I, I would say that's that's probably the lightest as far as crowd wise as people here of New Year's shows that I've been, that I've been to here, and it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't, we had two hundred people. Yeah, it was still a oh, lot, good amount yeah. of people, yeah, but you know, usually it's a little bit. And more, we might have fun. had that last year because uh-huh. of that's capacity and whatever it is they're calling this round of the pandemic that's you know that's where we were at last year but this year i noticed uh as we had a little break in between before the countdown a lot of people just kind of went okay we've had we saw a fun show it was good and they left so we had a chunk of people that left before i mean a good 20 or 30 people most of the back row most of the 300s in the back left because obviously huh. they were spread at 200, right? But they left a lot of people, and I, I'm just over there going, "Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> great, go, go, start your car and be safe." Sounds like they would have liked 11:30 countdown. <laughs> yeah, <I would've>. <laughs> <laughs> they, maybe they were following you. Did you post that on TikTok? Yeah, were they following you? Because then they went, "Oh, whatever Tyler Walsh is doing." We're in. <laughs> it's the new trend. I find it funny that Davis screwed up sound and now Omaha's getting a mask mandate again. Oh, that has <laughs> nothing to do with You it. did ruin the new year. <laughs> for saying everybody. you ring in the new year wrong? <laughs> yeah. I might have. <laughs> I tried. I could have did the best I could do. You did you have the new city. computer then? I did. Yeah, I had it all set up uh, for New Year's. Remember, because easy. I didn't, uh, for the early show, uh, Derek Stroop's song didn't play because Correct. on the new computer, yeah. you have to like on iTunes really center that mouse on the play thing and I had it off to the side I guess is what I figured out. Huh. So the only thing I can think of cuz it didn't play. She looked she was sitting in the back and like looked at me right through the little <laughs> the little yeah, head out there. Yeah, they always do. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now it's just Derek Stroop. Let's do it. And then I apologized to him and he's like, "Oh, in Denver we don't even come up with music." So it was like being at home. And I was and <laughs> that's how they are every time. I feel like it's a big deal and they're always like, "No, right. it doesn't Whatever. matter." Right. Or yeah. they play, you know, they have a joke off of it right at the beginning if Correct. we screw it up or something. So. Yeah, wake up Davis in the sound booth. That's yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I liked uh, that night. I thought the the order of the first show was the best, um, even though both shows were great that have Chase open, uh, Tommy and, and feature, then and then Derek Lass. Just the yeah. buildup of it, it, was, it was. was awesome. And yeah, that's it was what great. we did on the first. Oh, okay. When I was going to let them choose, and I went, no, that's the best yeah. yeah, that sounds no, like that the best was, lineup. It's yes. the best lineup. Well, because it builds up, you know, from from Chase to then Tommy. And Tommy had a great set for a show uh, New Year's Eve. It was awesome. It was he one of the did. best I've seen him do here. And then you have Derek being loud and yelling and cussing at the end. It kind of all, <laughs> all, all, no, all comes yeah, together. That, that, was, that was the way to go. <laughs> it was pretty good. And then we had another big show. And unfortunately, we got news yesterday that this guy has passed away. But uh, we did a show with Bob Saget in December, which was a little bit crazy and fun and all of the above. We did a full week, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, six shows. Yeah, it, we were the last club to have him for a full weekend. Really? Because then he broke <coughs> for Christmas right. and New Year's. He was home. And then he just did a theater the night before he died. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So we were the last ones. 
No, it was in Florida. No, Florida. It was in Florida. Oh, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Orlando, I thought. Well, that's where he died, but I right. think the Oh, the theater, show. Yeah, yeah. The show was somewhere else. It was in like uh, Jacksonville or Yeah, I think it was Jacksonville. Okay. Sadly, yes. Yep, Bob will be missed by many. I mean, he over the years he's been fun. Uh He's quite the entertainer. He's very precise in what he wants, as you guys know. Uh, <laughs> we made money with him. He I, a, At the end of the whole weekend, he was sitting with me saying he loved the room. He loved the energy of the people, the fans. He had a great time, and he said, I'll, I'll come back in 2022. Oh. Just, oh, really? Just tell him when you want me. I'll be back. I love your room. Oh. And... You know, I went, okay, Bob, you know, I'm looking at everything, you know, people did really, really Oh, they, enjoy they loved the it. The, the, they loved the, show. the fans, the because crowd he's enjoyed an icon. it. Yes, he oh, is. Yeah. You know, he's just an icon. Well, and he's around. so, you know, so opposite of his, you know, TV. You know, he's so filthy up there. And, yep. it's, and it's funny. He's not just up there, you know, swearing to swear and saying dirty stuff just to say dirty stuff. I mean, it's it's funny, too. That, and that's how he thinks. Right, right. And that's yeah, him. That, yes, he was playing a character with Danny Tanner, and right. I think he had to bite his tongue a lot. He told me years ago when he was hosting America's Funniest Videos huh. because, you know, what he wanted to say to somebody after he saw their video that it would have <laughs> been edited out. <laughs> so, nope. Loved, he talked to me about his daughters. He was just very proud of his daughters. Uh, my son Martin is here for one of the shows sitting on the, the side and as we all know, during this time, Bob wasn't into a meet and greet or any of that kind of fun stuff. So when he was standing there waiting to go on, uh, my nephew, Andrew, and Martin were sitting there. And I just said, hey, Bob, this is my son. He flew in from New York, not specifically to see you, but right, right, right. we would pretend. Right. And he went, really? And he went over and he, ta he said, hey, hi. Where do you live? And Martin said Ridgewood. And he said my daughter, one of my daughters, is in Brooklyn, and you know she's trying to make it, doing it there. And he goes, "That's so cool that you're here." And I love your mom. This club is one of the best in the country. It's, and you know, so he shook his hand, and Martin went, "Wow, he was really cool." And I went, "To you, he was." <laughs> <laughs> Well, just you saying um, how he brightened up, you know, when you were like, Martin flew here just to see you. That makes that makes a lot more sense because when, and I guess I'll start from the beginning, but when he, he was on stage talking talking to me and talking at me and Vinny, yeah, at. there was a comment in between him uh, kind of bitching about stuff where he was like, you guys aren't even happy to see me. And that sticks out now that you say that because in his mind, we weren't, prepared Correct. for him so it, it was like who and cares we it's we bob weren't. saget and you're right no yeah. we weren't no we and, weren't I, at all. and i said that to him too uh because he did apologize to me out um i guess i'll start from the I beginning say we might want to start yeah back it up to the, for the listeners so uh we come in that thursday and there's a sound check and um i had to wait for my wife to get home for uh to take care of my daughter and Vinny uh, usually comes in a little bit later because he's got to work. So we showed up, you know, not exactly on time when we were supposed <laughs> to. And I get in and the first thing is this is just the green room is just a bad place for me to meet comics because that's where I met Polly in the same kind of thing as I walk in the green room and Bob's <laughs> sitting there and I'm super excited because Danny Tanner, I grew up watching TGIF with my family on Fridays and stuff. And, uh, the first thing he's like, he's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, you're late. Are you going to be on time tomorrow night? And I was like, yeah. And then I kind of was looking around to see if they were mad at me too. And I was like, wait, what's going on? And then we started doing the sound check and he got on stage. And I think the first thing he asked for was like the guitar chord. And it was still in the bag. And I didn't know oh, that. And I was just like, that was I, a panic. And I was we like, I don't, I don't know where yeah. the chord is. And he's like, oh, you don't have the guitar chord? And I'm looking around for it. And I literally, I hadn't even like turned the computer on. So then I get back there. I think I was doing that when you walked in. Yeah, you were. But he was asking me about songs at that time, too. And I was like, I'm trying to pull it up right now because I can't find them. And that's about the time you rolled in. And I was like, hey, man, uh, you got this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I walk in and he's up there on stage and, and you're frazzled. And I'm like, What's going on? He's like, where's my songs? And I look at Davis, I'm like, 
where's the song? And you're like, <laughs> I, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, shit. And, and then he's looking for the guitar cable. And then I was like, uh, I don't know. And so I'm frantically digging through all of our stuff, which Davis had just recently neatly made nice and clean. And uh, yeah, I'm pulling stuff out, throwing it left and right. And I'm like, we used to have guitar cables. I don't know where they're at. And so Daisy goes <coughs> running in the green room and she comes back and she goes, is this it? And I look at it and yeah. I go, yes. Now go take that down there. But then he took the cord. She took the cord down there and then he, she plugged it in and it didn't work. Oh, that's right. And then he thought it was the batteries in his guitar. But it so then he changes out the batteries and he's frustrated, obviously, and for you know, valid reason. And so then he changes out the batteries and then it still didn't work. And so then I sent Davis down there to go check which port it was plugged into. And there was some stuff that was set up, not how I thought it was. And so Davis was like, uh, I plugged into this one. I'm like, no, you need to change it to the other one. So he got in that one. We got the guitar working. Okay, cool. And then he's like, okay, do you have the songs? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. no, I don't have any songs. And he goes, well, I sent them. I know you got them because we sent them. And I'm like, okay, but I don't have them. And so then he's like, okay, well, what's your email address? So I start reading off my email address and then he, and then, Oh, that's super yeah, long. <laughs> yeah, super long. It's my first let initial, my middle initial, my last name, and then four numbers. And as I get to the four numbers, he's like, could this be any more cryptic? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Like, what? So then I give him my email address and then he sent me uh, the song and then I got it and then I, but I couldn't get in on the computer so then I had to pull it up on my phone, played it through my phone, got that. He's like, okay, that one's good. And he's like, okay, where's the second one? I'm like, I don't have it yet. And then finally it came later. And then he's like, okay, well, where's the third one? And I was like, well, I still don't have that one. He goes, well, it's like the first one, but we'll just test you that one out. You can see yeah. where he would be frustrated. Oh, yeah, for and, sure. And Absolutely. You know, in, in uh, Bob's defense, he was used to dealing with theaters or casinos where they have a full-time sound guy. Yes. Right. And then he's kind of flipping out a little bit after we got everything happening. We had to hold the show because he needed a lo longer sound check than we really thought he right. needed for his couple of songs. <laughs> so yeah. we're holding everybody there who's now backed out. And then for him to, f I went, at the end of the night, I went, Daisy, I can't even tell him he's not going to have Vinny for the next three months. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different guy each night. I can't even <laughs> tell him that because it's going to be flip out city. Yeah. No, you could Which, tell that he thought we were that we had a paid sound guy that was correct. only a sound guy because he right. got, he was saying because the funniest part to me and he probably didn't think it was funny and wasn't trying to be funny is the whole time this is going on and he's saying to find those songs in between that he's just talking shit <laughs> like, oh yeah i forgot yeah. about that like, bit this oh, has never yeah. happened before <laughs> this is show business <laughs> we had we had half of the wait staff who wanted to take him out because he dissed his, their boys. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. my gosh. It was I, so hilarious. I kept walking in the kitchen because I hate controversy. <laughs> and then, but he, and I was so happy to not know how to do sound. <laughs> waiting for you guys. But Puss. was it you that turned, yes. <laughs> <laughs> was it you that turned, he was saying louder, louder, louder. And you blared the music on accident. And he said, he he said something about, oh, that's a bitch move. Or he yeah. said something about sour bitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, no. He was calling himself a bitch. No, no, uh, he's like, no, I'm no, being no. a bitch. And he then he called him a bit. He's yeah. like, now you're being a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. He's like, you trying to blow up my eardrums? And I was like, no, because I was on my phone. And I, I had the, the, he's like, I need it louder. But I had it all the way up on the board. And so then when I, I pushed the volume button on my phone and it did that thing where it jumped to the max. And so then it blared it out. And I was like, oh, shit. So then I quick bring the. The line down, it. and I'm sure you did. Well, I hate controversy, but I stay in the kitchen going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the music blared and he said, bitch, I was like, yeah, now we're going. <laughs> no, that did, that did, uh, that got in his head a little bit because after we were done, he came back and I came out and I was the only person he had seen. He hadn't really seen Vinny. And he goes, did you do that on purpose? Like for his ears? I was like, I didn't do it. It was, yeah. The, and then, and he, then he talked to him. And then and he, he poked like, through no. the little window in the sound booth and he was like, did, he's like, hey man, did you mean to blow up my ears? What were you trying to do? And I was like, no, it was an accident he's I swear. a perfectionist and he really wanted to give the best show yes possible. he did he hadn't been on the road that much doing this set so we were one of the trial places that you know so often they like to come and play it here right 
because we're in the middle of the cornfield, so they can kind of get it together and then go out to the big out. money spots. So, you know, I understand where he was coming from. For sure. And I do feel that I slipped, you know, I dropped the ball because in preparation, I hadn't followed up to go, Vinny, do you have the email that I sent you? Right. We need to be on top of this. And Vinny, this is a night that you need to be in here early or somebody else has to be because, right. uh, you know, he wasn't this persnickety the last time he was here. No. Well, and what happened was when we booked this, we only had him for Friday and Saturday. Right. So I looked at the rider ad. before and then I was like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. This he doesn't affect me. And then we added that Thursday like a week before. Mm -hmm. And so, and I never even thought to look over the writer and see if that stuff sold out one and a half shows doing it, you yeah. know? Right. Yeah. In less than a week. So anyway, uh, Bob was, uh, a handful at a, for a few minutes, but you know, yeah, Friday end, night he, he was pretty, I mean, he was cordial to me. Well, Scott said he talked shit about you, uh, turn it. And I think. I don't think how I think how Scott thought is he meant sound all night, but I think he was talking about what you yeah, just intro. did uh, on gotcha. stage, turning it up because he—that's all he told Scott was this guy was messing with the levels and tried to blow out my ear. Gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot more sense because when you texted that to me, I got super pissed. I was like, I did not. I even asked you during. Well, I couldn't believe he shows. would even say that. First yeah, of all, but because I between get it. shows, I even he's like everything sounded great. It was good. Because, you know, right after that, you know, he he apologized. He's like, I haven't slept in four days. And he said, and I got family same stuff. Same to I, me, yep. I've got illnesses at home. He's like, but that's right. no reason for me to act the way that I did. Right. But I'm a perfectionist, and I just want everything to be perfect and yep. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so I, he's like, are we good? I was like, yeah, we're good. I was like, I'm just happy you're back. And he's like, well, I'm happy to be back. And, you yeah, know. He so backpedaled with me and was, was really cool. And then all Saturday, he just loved Sean's ass. Which so is the <laughs> Yeah. So you, you took really good notes, Benny. Yeah. Bitches, Whatever notes. Bitches. I took he all the took like, all the venom for you, you, you lucky bastard. Like, Did we work the same weekend? <laughs> he loved Sean. Sean nailed it. Everything was just perfect with him. And he, I, he I, made a cup. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, the, the only thing that I did that kind of, that he liked is I kept on going in and letting him know, hey, He's got such and such amount of time left. So he, he knew what was happening. He knew when he needed to be right. out. Oh, I think it was more than that. I, I think it, by then you just had it down pat with his cues and the levels. And he had sleep. Because he also knew how much time I did the same thing Mike I said. had left because yeah. he dictated. That true, too. true, true. Sean and Bob just had him eaten yeah, out they of his hand by <laughs> then. That's right. <laughs> right. So you made him happy. Oh, that's good. And at Did the end, he said, I want to come back. Only because of Saturday, working with Sean. Right. Sean was the reason we were going to get him back. <laughs> yeah, was he like, only if no. the sound guy on Saturday works? <laughs> <laughs> and he made some, I remember him making some vague, during the show, like he was cool, professional, and he even kind of apologized in a slight oh, way. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. He shit on himself on stage, like I was being kind of earlier. Like yeah, he's a like, I was, I was being a bitch earlier. Yep, and he did say that. Yeah. And I walked him to the car uh, both nights, and both nights he apologized to me on the way out. And the f after the first night, yeah, I was like, I said, hey, I was like, no problem. We weren't ready. You expected something. We didn't have it for you. It's going to go smooth the rest of the weekend. And he was like, cool, and left. Because so. Mike Young, who was with him, you know, I'd go, Mike was pretty much on the phone a lot in the green room mm -hmm. with his family. So when oh, I'd pop gotcha. in there, he, you know, he was dealing with, with uh, wife and kids. And, you know, I just... He said, oh, no. he said, Bob's fine. He said, he's just so particular, precise. He wants to give, he feels he's got a reputation. He wants the best show possible. And, and he just kind of felt, I think what bothered him the most was us starting everything late on Thursday. Yeah. With not having everything hooked up. Right. Not having, you know, waiting Vinny to come in because Vinny knew what was happening. Right. And then he wanted to do an extra long sound check, which the lobby's full of people. Sure. So that first show didn't start on the to on time. The second one didn't start on time. So that was something that really bothered him. Uh, and when he got in his groove, he was having a good time. So he yes, went he long. Was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So on Friday. Yes. And <laughs> well, and you even said you didn't set those Thursday times. He did. 
Because those weren't our normal show times. Correct. Everything was earlier. Correct. Yeah. And so had it have been at our oh, normal 7.30? Yeah, because there's a and 7 I don't know show. that Bob said it. It's his people <coughs> well, did it. It wasn't right. us. Right. Yeah. So it all. Yeah. My, my favorite Seven. part of the fr- a Thursday show was <laughs> on the early when he asked something about requests for songs, <laughs> his old songs. And a lady yelled, play the Hanukkah song. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You, do, you have brought that up a couple times. <laughs> you were times. very happy about that. <laughs> he said, that's Adam Sandler's song. Why would I play it? And she goes, yeah, do that one. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> crazy. That's People crazy. are crazy. <laughs> just from being that, I just like those moments of train wreckism. But nobody thought Bob was going to die this week. It's, no. uh, yeah, that's, it, that, it's I just mean. crazy. And, uh. It changed it changed my whole outlook and experience with him because he passed. I told these guys uh, last week, maybe I think it was a week or so ago. I was trying to make a fake Twitter under the yeah. name Bob F A G E T, and I was gonna go around and comment on a bunch of stuff. This is show business, but someone already had that, and I wasn't able to be a troll that way. And uh, that was a good thing now because I would have felt horrible. Yeah, you would. I would have. Yeah. I would have yeah. felt terrible about well, it. Well, you know, and and we were saying, I think it was that night or it might have been some other time. I was like, you know, it was like, oh, it was. It was. I think it was second show. We were, we were still a little salty, and I was like, I've got Bob Saget's email address. I was like, I'm gonna start sending him all kind of raunchy <laughs> pictures and and putting his email address on like to spam and doing. I was like, he's like, he better watch out. And yeah. But I mean, and that's that's how I am usually. Anyway, my first reaction is always really harsh. Like, why is this fucking guy? Instead of like <laughs> looking at the bigger picture, and right. I think that's kind of the lesson that I've learned from all this is like, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe don't react so harshly yeah, at the don't beginning, or don't think I don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know, like like it's it know. is uh, it's a crazy life's a crazy thing, man. And if you would later. just walk a little faster, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 it makes me so fucking mad. <laughs> Me so fucking mad. Oh, give I'm that. fast. <laughs> give so that. what? What was this all about? Because I don't think I knew about this. Oh. So was this Friday. Uh, yeah, I had to, I had to walk him from stage when you. Right, right, right. Okay, so Friday first show, he had his hand on my back like the whole time we were walking, and when we got to the green, he's like, "Can you go a little faster?" And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." And I didn't realize that his hand was on my back because he's trying to push me. Like, he's trying to, like, <laughs> run. He's, like, almost trying to run out of the room. But yeah. in my head, he's getting off stage. He's, he's giving high fives to these people. And so I'm trying to hang back so that, like, someone doesn't, like, grab because my back's turned. And right. so in my head, that's what I was thinking. But he no. wanted me to just block and get the fuck out of there. Right. I didn't understand that. He didn't want to so high second five. So second show, yeah, he's, like, pushing my back <laughs> and i was like and so i started moving a little faster and then apparently on saturday he talks saturday shit. he first thing he says to me he's like Fucking when when you have someone come walk me up the stage make sure that they walk fast <laughs> because the guy that's the, the guy, first thing he said <laughs> yes he, he don't want that mosey I'm, so fucking mad. He's oh, like, I'm not here to, to enjoy the scenery i want to get out of the what room. did he say i saunter is that so, saunter or something like that? Fucking, and, you know, that's a doesn't know joke. how to work. Well, that's a fact. Work joke. security <laughs> for celebrities because, <laughs> well, he, the, what he told me was that, and and probably why he was trying to get out of there so quickly is he said he was somewhere just recently, and because when he gets off stage, that's it. That's the end of the show. Nobody else right. goes back up. Right. And he said, yeah. so if the house lights come up, like so he's like the last place he was at, they, the house lights came up right away, and then he's still in the room. Right. And so it's very awkward with him. Oh yeah, I did hear there. him. Say so he that. wants to get out while it's still dark. Correct. And when you're being too slow, he can't do that. <laughs> because he <laughs> I does. I thought I was moving at a great pace. <laughs> he, he does get pawed. Oh yeah. Yes. Sure. No. Yes. He does get pawed, and so many people think they know Danny Tanner that they're mm-hmm. friends. Right. They, they, yeah, they grew and, up yeah, watching. I had so many people ask me, "Can we get a picture? Can we get this?" I mean, the only person who got an autograph was Tony Basis. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and if you see Tony Basis, the, the whole thing it, it's it's kind of weird. The the fun story with that because uh, Tony brought the great little Danny Tanner picture. I take it in there and say, "Hey, Bob, sign this." One of our regular fun guys, and uh, as he's starting to sign it, I said. In preparation, do you want any cash or anything? So he's writing, Dear Tony, 
cash. And so he put cash in there. <laughs> then had, so then he had to write around it and put, you are a man who likes cash and <laughs> whatever he put. If, if you look at Tony's Facebook page, yeah. he, he posted it today. And it's just, it all got a little skewed because... I was talking to him. We had two things going at the same time. And <laughs> Tony funny. probably got the last autograph from Bob Saget. Probably. The last one. Because after that, he w- it yeah, was you're holiday. Probably right, yeah. And then he did a theater. Yeah. So, bases scored one more time. <laughs> <laughs> it said, uh, Tony, you are a dirty, dirty, cash-consumed man. Bless you, Bob Saget. <laughs> That's great. That's kind of cool. That's that awesome. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> but it's all because I I was asking you if he wanted any dirty cash before <laughs> he left the building. <laughs> so that's how that little thing panned out. All right, let's go. Let's go. What do you have? Get into it, Davis. Uh, what do you? What kind of questions you want to start Colleen off with her comedy career? Uh, so obviously, you know, you, you know, everybody and, and everybody loves you. Is there one comic or is there someone that you haven't had here or, or at the either club that you really like, man, I really want to have that person here. Oh God, there's always people that I sure, would love but like someone that have. you've been looking at for years or someone that, you know, for whatever reason, it never worked out. I mean, obviously, there's n- new people coming up all the time, and there's, you know, people getting into it. You know, like we had Kevin James, and, you know, right, stuff like right, that comes up. Right, one with him. Right, but is there somebody that's always kind of like on your wish list of comics we would you would like to get? Not get back, because, I, I mean, I know we would both love to have Lewis Black and, and well, people yeah, like that Lou's, back. Well, yeah, Lou's been here over the years, so right. that's all fun. Um you know, today Todd and Tyler did an interview with Whitney Cummings. I'd love to have, you know, some of the powerful women mm-hmm. back here on stage. Um, she's one of them. You know, uh, so many have graduated to the theater and upper level that, you know, we'll never get a Chelsea Handler right. or right. a Kathleen Madigan. You know, it's it's their time in this level has come and gone. And I'm happy for everybody's success. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really happy for their success. You know, and there's so <laughs> many uh, young comics right now that, you know, people say, oh, who should I come and see? Who's funny? And I go, you know, there are so many funny people that you don't know their name. And I tell people that all the time. You know, you just don't know their name. I mean, think about the times that we had Pete Lee yep. or... You know, Josh Blue, I mean, these guys are hilarious, and they're just not only up and coming, they're at a certain level, and pretty soon we're going to lose them. Last year, we had Nate Bargatze. Where's he in two weeks? Yep. At the Orpheum. Yep. Right. I have tickets. And yeah. Nice. And this, well, I'll wave to you from backstage. <laughs> 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 but, no, talk about a killer comic. I mean, that's Bargatze, and... And the same with a Joe List. Tonight, yeah. do you know who's on Jimmy Fallon tonight is, uh-huh. um, who was here with Louis, B- Louis C.K.? Oh, uh. Oh, the. Renan Hirschberg. Oh, really? Yep, that's it. Uh, who's yeah. so funny. Who is so funny. So he's on Fallon tonight. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's so awesome. So I will definitely watch that. Um, you know, there's just so many guys that Joe Coy, think about. Yeah. I had times back in the day I had to comp tickets for Jeff Dunham. I had mm-hmm. to tell people, <laughs> look, well, he's got puppets, but you'll probably find him funny. <laughs> and now, you know, Dunham is. Well, and I always say, you know, we, we used to have room 100 people here for Burt Kreischer. Correct. I mean, you yeah. know, we had light. Nights for Burt Kreischer, and and we'd stand in the bar, and he'd drink beer with whoever hung out yeah. afterwards. Of the hundred people, now he's huge. Yeah. He he played he's Red huge. Rocks. I oh, went. I know it was awesome. How Sold out. The pinnacle. I mean, that's that's, that's awesome. The top. That's mm. yeah. bigger than Madison Square Garden. Oh, I agree. Sure. It's huge. It's huge. And now today they just announced Joe Coy's going to have his own Joseph sitcom on nbc oh really oh, wow. he was talking about that on todd and tyler well, it's happening huh that's awesome it's that's happening crazy. so they're they're gonna shoot that soon he's such a nice guy he's really nice and 
you know, that it's just uh, so many guys who have come through and glad that they hit it and survived. Yeah, glad we got to see them. Yes. I know, right? Yes, and there's another batch. There's a Joe List. There's a Mark Norman. There's yeah. a lot of those young guys coming through that, you know, could be on the verge. So if you don't come and see him, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> and you lost out. You missed out. Mark okay. actually opened up for Bert at Red Rocks. Mark Norman did? Mm hmm. Well, and did Dave Williamson also? Uh, we missed the first comic. Um, could could have been Dave because yeah. he takes him a lot. I'm not sure. Hmm. That's awesome. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. So my, I have a couple questions. One of my questions, or my first one, I guess, is um, you've been doing this in Omaha for many, many years. And I've heard you talk before when you first started, the local comedy scene here wasn't as strong as it has become over the years. Mm -hmm. And I feel like being around this for a few years now that um, it's almost like high school classes of local comics where they, you know, they either graduate college or they quit or they move on. And there's different ones. Is there a year or a time period um, in Omaha that you would think was the strongest local comics that we have? Is there some a year or a time period that you can pinpoint that was stronger than it is? Or has it gotten stronger just throughout the years? You know, because I know there's like down years and, you, right. you know, where there's not as strong a comics, you know, not not trying to put anyone down, but just saying, you know, there's stronger comics than other ones at times, you know. Well, this biz always has an ebb and flow. Right. And there are those that it's in their fiber, in their DNA, and they stick with it and they take it to a different level, you know, whether it's regional or whether they move out to one of the coasts right. and, and pursue it. Uh, in the late 90s, you know, I had I had a Mark Gross who was very strong. You know, I still find Sean Gannant very funny. Right. Was, <laughs> uh, we need to get him back. Favorite. Craig Peters was kind of in that era. Um, there was another Omaha comic named Craig Anton who then went on to write and do different things who was really, really good and strong. Um uh, you know, and now we, I've we've got we've got uh, ten good guys around here right. that you know are going off to pursue other things, so they can't just sit here and MC. Right. You know, and that's that's where I miss out on a lot of uh, having those strong guys. You know, Ty Walsh, Nick Allen, Richard Reese, Austin Anderson. Those guys are all out and pursuing and doing other things because they would be my go-to guys. And when uh, I first started, those were, those were right. the go-to guys. And they were guys. hanging out yes. and they were available. Yep. And now they're, yeah, they're, and they have a lot more going, which and is great And now we've got them. another, you know, little batch. I mean, you know, with Cameron and Kionis and I don't know who else, you know, is Logsdon, Cam, all those guys are all just really good and strong. But with that being said, a few of them have either families or real jobs. Right. So they mm -hmm. can't just give it all up and hit the road and live in their car like this guy can. <laughs> <laughs> and he really, you know, he can <laughs> go and pop a rim on his way to Des Moines or South Dakota or take the gig and have me yell at him because he's it's costing him money instead of making money. Right. <laughs> you know, we've had a couple of those yeah. talks. Yes, we have. <laughs> and you should take them to heart, Tyler. Yeah. Yes, and listen could. to them. She I knows what she's it. talking no, about. I've turned down some. Yeah, I know. Good. You've said that. I'm you, proud yeah, of you. I'm You're like, I'm proud Colleen of you. yelled at me for taking these gigs yeah. where I'm losing money. Yeah. So I just turned, <laughs> this guy asked me to come out there and it's going to cost me 100 bucks and he's going to pay me 20. So I told him no. <laughs> I'm no I haven't just done anything that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why you told him no. <laughs> because if you need that stage time, I'll unlock the door. You can stand here on a Tuesday night for free and talk to yourself <laughs> <laughs> on a microphone. I'll come watch you. Save <laughs> money. But I do, I do, especially right now, sometimes I'll still take something because I still get that fear like you'll never do anything again if you say no to that thing. And then I'll take something, and then a couple of days later I'll be like, oh, I can't tell fucking Colleen about this. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, better not. You better not. <laughs> Otherwise I'll tell you, you should only be booked by Minker. <laughs> 
Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up, Tyler Walsh. <laughs> Tick tock your ass down there. And just get in the top bunk with the minker. Oh, I'm trying to put up a TikTok right now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's all you do now. Yeah, right? It, it's, it's paying like off. It, it's dumb, but it feel, it's like a job. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Do it. You need the Putting social media there. to take yourself to another level. It's about getting me in trouble at my day job, which is fun. But <laughs> they know I don't really care. But didn't you have to have like a corporate meeting about your one of your TikToks? Oh, yeah, I had to get meet with the managers and found out that I wasn't in trouble. He was almost in trouble. Oh, wow. Well, why is he watching TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, head, the head corporate guy in Omaha is an older guy, and his grandkids, he must... He's oh, they see you. Okay. My my one video has 2.3 million views now of me doing a kind of a little bit of a modification of a stage bit. But I started it with showing my shoes at a place where OSHA requires steel toe boots. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I showed my shoes and said my boss has been hassling me that I need steel toes. Well, I just made that up. That happened with an old boss. Yeah. Well, our old boss got fired, so this new guy, he got reprimanded for <laughs> hassling me for <laughs> <laughs> because he said the old this manager really <laughs> mistreated these guys, and I don't, he said, I saw on that TikTok that you're giving, he's like, he's making that up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, so wait, I'm not in trouble for not wearing boots? He's like, no, I'm in trouble for telling you you need boots. <laughs> <laughs> Which because is requirement, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, I got told, yeah. He just said, take it easy on those guys. <laughs> he's like, it's a TikTok. <laughs> cool. Yeah, he said, you can still do it at work. Just don't talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. That's a good stipulation. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how the social media has replaced big things, you know, like HBO specials and Comedy Central right. specials. And, you know, those were the thing, you know, Letterman and, and, and Leno. And those were the, the, the big things that people would have me say as credits. But now it's like, oh, I don't really have anything. Well, yeah, because you're... Just, you know, going on Look your social these media. no names that have come in through YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Going, Who are you and why did you sell this out? Yeah. It, it's, it's amazing. And some of them can do it on stage and then translate and some of them right, can't, which can't. is, yeah, which is, is a, a whole yeah, different We talked thing about too. that one. Yeah, we did. We did. We, did, yeah, we, did. we <laughs> also found out that the people coming out to see them don't really care. No, they you're right. They're sitting there. They're in awe of somebody they've watched for is in so front many of them. hours. Yep. And here they are live in person. We've got one coming up in a couple of weeks. A guy named Noel Miller, who's of the oh, yeah, Tiny I saw him Meat there. Gang. I mean, oh, yeah, we, looked at we him. could probably add two more shows for him. Really? Wow. Do we know who he is? No, no. we don't. I don't know who he is. because. I, I, so this dates me. Back, <laughs> in, back in the early days, if somebody wanted to get a, a slot at the Omaha Funny Bone... One, I would perhaps find out from a phone call from a Des Moines, Kansas City, or Columbia, Missouri club that this guy was an up-and-comer, this, this gal. I would get packages in the mail with VH tapes, VH1 tapes on them. Mm -hmm. And so here you have this tape, and I got so many, and people would call back or send a postcard, did you see my tape? Can I get in? And I would take a stack of those that I, I got every week in the mail. I would take them home. At the time, my son Dan was probably 12. I would have Dan and Martin, 10 and 12 years old. I'd give them a stack of tapes, and I'd say, just watch these. And how would I have the heart to tell somebody, you didn't make it into the club because a 12-year-old <laughs> put a post-it note on your tape saying, Regular white guy, no hook. <laughs> 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 and, and a lot of times I passed on him because that's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> and I just went, because I wouldn't watch all of these. So we'd get. Well, that's a ton of tapes to oh, watch, yeah. I'm sure. A lot of them. So many. Because you had nothing else so better to do. So the guys would just sit there and, and put them into the machine and watch them. Uh, you know, son Dan would watch them and thought, oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's up, Mom. And then it, I'd have somebody, 
come in and I'd go, well, you know, you're really just here because uh, my son Dan, who's doing his homework in my office right now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> passed you through. And so, of course, they'd want to take him out for pizza and of ice course. cream and <laughs> give him a T-shirt, which he would. Uh, it's Today, he just sent me a picture of a T-shirt he found in his closet that he was having tailored because it was a really big T-shirt. And it had something to do with Russia and vodka. And he had worn it to Peter Kiewit. <laughs> and I got a call because he was wearing an inappropriate shirt. And I said, just have him turn it inside out. I'm not coming up there right now. <laughs> but literally today he went, this is the T-shirt that you got a call on that no I, way. I had to turn That's inside awesome. out. And w back in the old days, we had Tommy Davidson was there, and he had T-shirts he was selling that he gave one to the, to Dan, and Dan wore it, and it was something about Rodney King was right. <laughs> and, you know, it had somebody pounding on somebody, so he wore that to school. So <laughs> that was another call. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, what a collector's item. That oh, would yeah. Be. For, yeah, absolutely. If I had that one. I mean, back in the day, we had Jamie Foxx, and he had some weird... Mad TV T-shirts he was selling. Really? When he huh. came in. And Jamie Foxx was so pissed because in the front row, a guy showed up dressed up in one of his characters of of his transvestite character. Oh, uh, <laughs> Shanene is what, in, yes. From In Living <laughs> yes. Color. And he didn't want to see that person sitting right there as he was wow. doing his act. Really? Oh, he was mad. He was so I could mad. I could see that I could oh see yeah. him being mad. Was, and mad. why would you do that? <laughs> because they love. They're a fan, I mean, super sense. fan. Yeah, you're right. Look, you're right. I love you, and I love this character, and I love him so much. I dress like him. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't. That's that's going a little far. And Just because I'm still mad about we went to see Superman one time a long time ago, and an adult dressed like Superman, and my kids are young, and his wangs just out in a Superman costume and so that type of shit pisses me <laughs> off sometimes <laughs> anyway that's my ptsd <laughs> feel better PTSD. you got that off your chest yeah now. don't dress up like things <laughs> <laughs> don't do it sorry Vinny, i interrupted you <laughs> well i was just gonna make the comment that back in the old club you guys did all the seating chart ahead of time, right? Yes. So you had did. no idea that guy was even going to end up no, in front. No, we didn't. Oh, wow. Yeah. No. So the way we do it now, we how we human it. puzzle, they pre-sat it. And so, like, because Stacy said when they came over, she's like, I'm not doing that shit again. Oh, no. So she would get the list of all the people and the twos You'd and fours. You'd do it in the order they made the reservation. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And just seat it, like, from and front just, to back like those that? Those reservations were made by them calling in, us having a sheet, Writing Davis Peacock, Party of Four. Oh, shit, card. I get Yeah, you're right. We'd write the whole credit card and expiration date. Before everybody arrived that night, we would stand there at a machine and plug in all the numbers. So when they showed up at the ticket booth, here's their name stapled to a sheet, and they signed the credit card, and then we took them down and sat them. But it was all preceded. So if they showed up That's and crazy. said, I want to sit by so-and-so, like, you nope, can't. Right. Nope, too bad. Yeah, right. You had to say that when you called up. Oh, it was wow. a lot of work. How many did the old club seat? 280. Two, oh, so. 260. 260. And this is Sometimes three? 280. Well, yeah. we're, three. we're 320, but again, three. Because we often don't seat the sides. And, I, and, and in that number, it also includes like fives on the ends. You know, there's a few tables where we can fit a fifth at easily. Um, so, yeah, I think like 324, 328 or something like that is maxed That's out every chair. how many chair. chairs we Right, have. right. How many chairs we could sit, but we... You know. We try to go with 300. Yeah. We get to that. It's a happy day after the last two years. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, especially after the last two years. After the last two years where we had to take a little pause and regroup. <coughs> Hopefully that's not coming again. No Hopefully shit. Hopefully the mask mandate uh, just kind of. Yeah, the, that's not going to put anything on numbers. It's just if people are, everybody's got it. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah you're right. Everybody's got some form of whatever multiple times. Tyler, do you have a question for Colleen? 
I just uh, asked her how many of the clubs he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <coughs> He's very That is a good one. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't really kn- and you did you were you on that did you work at a club before you started no. managing? No. Or you just started you owned I or you just no, got no, no, in I, and I no. just I answered an ad after I moved here from Chicago. I answered an ad because that's how you found jobs back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't on Indeed or Monster.com? No. <laughs> uh, I, ans- I, I looked through and I went, oh, you know what? They're looking for a receptionist at a comedy club. I think I will do that for a little while because that is the opposite of what I've been doing. I was a bereavement counseling coordinator in Chicago, mm. and I dealt with AIDS patients. So every I was going through a divorce and my young son would come home and say, Ma, who died today? Because <laughs> I was always, every, they all died. Right, you know, I was dealing right. at Cook County Hospital with AIDS patients, and they were all young men, and they were all dying, left alone. So I'd grab, Dan might have been in first grade, and I'd pick him up, and I'd go, I just have to stop at this funeral home, or I just have to stop here. And So, you know, every day he'd go, hey, who died today, Ma? And I'd tell him, who was on the list. So I thought, okay, it's pretty heavy that I'm going through a divorce for these two kids who were seven and nine at the time, and uh, they know my career is dealing with death and dying. Uh, I was in charge of getting the right bereavement counselors hooked up with the right people who were checking out. And I really enjoyed it, and I was really good at it. And when I came here, I just took a pause and thought, okay, I'm going to do that again. I reached out to the hospice organizations here, and at that time they just said, well, you've got to go through training here. And I went, really? I've been doing this for X number of years, and you want me to go through training when I've held the hands of two dozen people dying? And so I just said, Yeah, can't you just call my boss from the other Uh, hospital (laughs) to see if I have any experience? We didn't have internet then. (laughs) You couldn't look anything up. So just on a lark, I went, okay, let me do something totally opposite of what I've been doing. I answered the ad, and I took the job for the receptionist. The w- it was in January of 1990, the week before they had just had Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. So I was here for the last show they had of Seinfeld. He found out that day that his sitcom, his pilot, had been picked up. So oh, no he way. Wow. He was really cool and took the staff out for sushi. And then the first full week I was there, we had a, a duo called Malone and Nucci's. So a musical comedy duo that played all the clubs all the time that were just really, really a cool act. And then the next week, I think we had... Kozak, and the next week Bobcat, and the next week a guy named Steve Rizzo, and then after that it was Uncle Lair. Oh, so oh yeah. those I love were Uncle Lair. what was happening back there in the 90s. So I took the job as a receptionist. When I came in and did that, the f- there were like three phones in this office, and they'd be ringing all the time if, some, if somebody wanted to make reservations. So you'd put them on hold. And I saw the young manager at the time was multitasking, and, you know, she was doing that. After I was filling out this application and sitting there, and I was shrewd enough to just go, I'm going to put these on hold because I don't know what to tell them. But I saw the phones ringing, and I pick up another and put them on hold. And when there was a break, I went, oh, you really need me. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) You you need somebody who can help you get organized because the club was brand new. Yeah. She was just, you know, a deer in headlights going, ah, I don't know what's happening. Was Mitch involved with the club at that time? So Mitch Mitch was. Has been beginning. But I didn't see Mitch yet. Sure, sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mitch from the very beginning. Very beginning. It it was Mitch was in charge of, uh, he was the main investor, Mitch Kutash. And so after about a month, everything was crazy, busy. I'd come back at night and be a cashier. Uh, I'd come back and bartend. And so I was just kind of filling in. And then at the same time, I've got these two young kids. So I went, all right, this isn't a career. (laughs) So I remember after about two to three months, I said to Joan, uh, 
you know, I've got some other irons in the fire. I've got to get something going because I'm a single mom and I need to do all this kind of fun stuff. She said, well, the main boss, Mitch, is coming in on Tuesday. Please don't tell him that you're quitting because I'm going to tell him I'm quitting. <laughs> 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 I, can't, I can't do this. So she said, please just don't. You know, so he came in and uh, she went out to lunch with him. And, and, you know, the club was hot. I mean, yeah. things were hopping then in the early 90s. And I remember they came back from lunch and I was just sitting there answering phones. And I just met Mitch, you know, a couple of hours prior to that. Obviously, I was much older than these young kids in their early 20s who were doing all this. She and her assistant manager. And he came back in. He goes, what the? And he goes, Quinsky, you're, how about you run the club? <laughs> because he knew everybody else there was young. Right. And uh, I obviously look like the most mature person. I go, I, mean, I don't know anything about right. running anything <laughs> like this. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, I think you should try it. Because, you know, they were desperate. Oh, they, yeah. they just mm. didn't know who they were going. And they were opening new clubs all the time. And he didn't want to spend any time in Omaha. <laughs> so I, at that time I said okay and I knew that because they were so tight to try to find people I said alright here's the deal Mitch I will do it and I will give you three months notice if I hate it if it isn't working out but if I stay you have to let me buy into it he goes okay fine Quinsky yeah. and so how many years later is it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Quinsky's still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been here for seventeen, so You've at been least here seventeen. For seventeen. <laughs> that's that's in the new club that yeah. isn't that new anymore, Vinny. I know, I know. The old club. We were there until two thousand and four. Yeah, you were saying that we've wow. been here longer than when we were at the old yes, club. We, we've surpassed it now. Oh, that's yeah. We've surpassed. That's crazy. It, it is. It I've is. Never thought Boy, about it's that. That's like crazy. That. Wow. wow. It's yeah. gone like that. And how many years of the old club were you here? None. None. So you when were they only new club? Yeah. So when they came over here, they cut entire staff except for Colleen and Stacy. And and that Everybody was Everybody else that was we locked up the old club in April of two thousand four. Yep. We opened here in August. Yep. So we had a downtime. Oh, so there was a, a a few months down. Everybody had to come in and reapply for jobs, et right. cetera, and not everybody made the cut. <laughs> 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 for, for certain I'm reasons. I'm surprised I, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I remember, and I think I told this story on my first episode, I remember going to do the interview for here because I had, uh, I, I needed a second job, and, and Jen was, my wife was working at the Target at the time, and so she was getting tired of it. She'd been there for like 12 years. And so she saw the ad for this, and so then they're like, okay, yeah. So we both, we came out and applied, and there was plywood for the front door. Yes. And there was an envelope for, with empty applications and an envelope to put completed applications. So we grabbed those, filled them out, put them back in, and then you guys did an open uh, interview call over at Mid-City at Bank. Bank. Yep. And Luke was there, right? Uh, did you interview with yes. Luke? It was you and Luke, and I thought there was another girl. Oh, it could be. It could have been I his wife, Amy. Other girl, maybe. She might have been there, because I don't think it was Stacy. No, no, I'm certain it wasn't Stacy. Or maybe it was just me and Luke. Mm -hmm. Luke might Bridgen, have been. He's but kind yeah. of a district manager guy. And I, and I really wanted him to hire everybody, because I didn't want to be involved. <laughs> it was like, I don't want to. <laughs> but he, he was good at finding out if anybody had any expertise. And Todd Lineback was involved. Yep. And and, uh, you know, Todd was like, uh, Vinny, I'm taking Vinny under my wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, well, and I remember walking out of there, walking out of the interview with you and because, you know, I, I'd heard you on Z92 and i had been to the old club a couple of times. And I remember walking out of there going, I think I got the job. I don't know what I'm really doing because I, I was like, I don't know, maybe kitchen, maybe bar, maybe door or maybe uh, a ticket booth. And you were like, no, I think you'd, you'd fit fine for door for security. And I was like, OK. And then I walked out. I was like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm getting right. paid. I don't know what I need to wear. I just know that I got a job because she told me to show up on this date for the open thing. And so then the I, rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> My goodness. 
It's I mean, you are gifted at reading people for sure. Oh yeah. That's, I think I feel like that's how I got hired. You guys just call me, you bring me in for like a night, and I th- we do that with everybody. You kind of feel them out. I, I do. I do. You know, and then and uh, either we invite you back or we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and if you're not wearing patchouli, you got a better <laughs> shot. <laughs> that is true. Well, you know that. <laughs> and one of my pet peeves. <laughs> Can't handle it. As, as far as comics in town, would any of the, like, would Richard have been at the old club or performed there? Or any of? I think th- Austin was there as a young comic. I don't know if Richard was there. Uh, I don't there. think so because I think Austin's first open mic was here. Was I here. think I remember seeing Austin and Richard and Nick. I mean, all those guys, you know, I saw them here as their first um, time. Yeah. I, you know, I've, God, I've had hundreds of employees now right. and their kids. <laughs> yeah. That, yes. And yeah. Uh, just hundreds and hundreds of comics. You know, three different comics, 52 weeks a year times 32 years. I should be a shell. <laughs> <laughs> I should just not remember as much as I do. Well, and you're crazy how you remember names and faces and things about people. And I'm just like, how do you remember those things? How, do, how, do, how, do, how can you remember this person or that face? And you're like, because I'm an idiot savant with those types of things. No, like, she you tells just, you to go find the ticket. <laughs> no, no, so no. She can Comics. find the name. Oh, if okay. I find the yeah, name, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it yeah. comes to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, even that too. And I'll help register that. Yeah, she'll do that. Like she, you did that. I think it was on Thursday or, or maybe it was Friday when I was working. You, you walked in. You're like, "What's the name? What's the name on, right. on this table?" And I'm like, right. "Oh, I read it off." You're like, "Oh, okay. That's why I know them from blah 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 yep. blah." And it's like, right? Yeah, it, it helps it all fall into place because yeah, lots of people. Well, a lot of people come in here and are like, "Oh, Colleen, I heard you on Z92," and they act like they know you. And then and, and their best friend Colleen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're really close. Yeah, they, they mispronounce my name. <laughs> uh, no, and and that's fun. That, uh, uh, that's it, it's fun. All PR is good PR, and obviously the relationship that I have with Todd and Tyler is, you know, gold. Yes. Oh, you yeah. Know, not only do I really care about those guys like they're my naughty brothers, mm-hmm. but. We've had a really good simpatico thing going since. It, it was a little rocky at first because when they came into the market, I want to say maybe in 92 or 93, mm-hmm. at that time I was taking comics to five or six different radio stations. There would be a Thursday oh, and yeah. Friday that we would do a country station and then we'd do a talk radio and then we'd do rock, rock, sweet 98, W.O.W., stations that don't exist anymore. But I would typically, between TV and radio, we might have five or six media on a Thursday and Friday. That's crazy. That's the only way to get the word out back then, you know? Back then, and it was great. Then when Todd and Tyler came in, and then they decided they wanted to have a different format and not do as much music, do more talk, have... We had a little growing period because... They kind of wanted to be exclusive with the comics. They didn't, for instance, want me to take them oh. to CD 105 before they then came there because then everybody had their radios on and were listening. And if they heard them at 7 o'clock on this station at 7.30 here and they weren't on Todd and Tyler till 8 or 8.30, they'd already kind of done their They've jokes li- yeah, or right, had right. their little skit that out. That makes sense. And they were like, no, we want to be... A-. So we went back forth about how exclusive could we be and you know there came a period of time when I uh, these guys get it they like the comics I get more of a push and a bump from them from being Z, on with yeah. let's just go there for three hours yeah right, right. <laughs> and so we kind of ended up doing that and they then have reforged relationships with comics over the years you know, I mean, they're really close with yeah, uh, Joe Coy, we'll call him, or Burt Kreischer, or Lewis Black. Yeah. You know, all these guys will call in because they feel they've got this, they bonded. Right. They bonded, and we've had fun. You know, we've, we've had, I- it's been a really good simpatico relationship. And, uh, you know, I miss not going up there, even though it's, it's uh, tiresome. <laughs> uh, not doing that because they're, they're taking a little pause right now because <coughs> we're going back to being safe again. Right. 
Yeah, they get you to say some things that uh, uh, you yes, don't want do. to <laughs> and uh, <laughs> wouldn't have otherwise. Yes, they they got me in trouble a couple of times. <laughs> a couple of times. Uh, I had one guy uh, who did, we, well, we just had Ben Roy. Yep. And on Friday night, I had a guy who said, Tell me I'm the first of the new year to say three holes, no waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I went, okay, you are, dude. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so there you bloody well have it. <laughs> you made his year already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going to be telling that story for the whole year. And then, he, and so his wife is with him and she's disgusted. She doesn't <laughs> listen. Right. She doesn't know what he's doing. And he went, honey, look. She, and I went. Yep, he got me. He got me. <laughs> I always ask, what is your name? And I look him and I, I shake his hand and I go, thank you, Kevin. Oh, did you make my night? I'd almost forgotten that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Live to embarrass my kids. <laughs> Hard to do. You had mentioned Colleen's good at reading people and talking to people. One of my favorite things, and I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I haven't seen it for quite some time. But I love when Colleen deals with the drunk people <laughs> because she, I mean, no matter how pissed off they are or, or whatever their issue is, Colleen will get to them. She'll talk to them. She'll listen to them for a little while and then she'll talk back and then she'll, she'll get them calmed down and then she'll, okay, well, here's a glass of water. Let's go back in and watch the show yep. and we'll move on, blah, blah, blah. And she can handle it. But my second favorite thing, and almost as much as watching her handle any drunk person is watching her get to that point where she's now done with this person because it's like it, all that niceness all that calm all that demeanor just right out the window she's like all right i'm done with you get out of here you know kiss here's a pass kiss my ass you know pay your tab and walk out my door and and uh, seeing that that switch is almost as good as watching her <laughs> handle <agree. laughs> those drunk people and flip them from raging to we, we have to be bear. far more cautious in this day and age this is true far more cautious so that's why i don't Lip as fast as I typically would. Right. But, uh, you know, back in the old days, it used to be, uh, I remember one of my mentors, Freddie DeMarco, I learned a lot about running a club from Freddie, who had Deja Vu Comedy Club in, in Columbia, Missouri for like 25 years. Legendary godfather Warren of Warren talked comedians. about him a lot. Yep. Oh, Warren. So yeah, did John Paul. John, yeah, Paul. John Paul, John Paul did talked too, about yeah. him too. And Warren had told us a story about how he called you up trying to get in here, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, Freddie DeMarco is uh, said to give you a call." And he's like, "Are you serious?" Because I'm real good friends with Freddie, and if I find out you're using his name, you're never going to work anywhere again. <laughs> That's right. He's like, yep. yeah, go ahead and call him. And so he, that, yeah. that was a great story <laughs> that true. he just told us that. Absolutely true. <laughs> but one, one of the little tidbits from Freddie, when I was dealing with somebody who was really drunk, I would get to the point and I would say, okay, you are cut off. You are done. You are out of here. And let me tell you, if I'm telling you that you are cut off, I don't want your money, that is really bad. Because oh, the money you're good paying yeah. Yeah. pays for my kids' education, pays my mortgage, pays for all of these kids to pay their bills. Right. And if I'm saying, I don't want your money, you're a fucker. Right. <laughs> that's that's, 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 that, I don't that's want the your greatest money. thing. Bye. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so and awesome. I, I, a lot of times their head would spin and they <sighs> yes. go, I go, I don't want your money. That's how bad you are. Bye. Out of here. I like this. Yeah. Because my favorite thing, uh, I don't know if you remember this, because they were, they, were, they were screaming out here in the hallway. They were calling you Nancy Pelosi Part 2, <laughs> <Yeah>. which <laughs> I was like, whoa, what? that's a real crazy bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew but I could <laughs> vote on it? Amendment. <laughs> and they got asked to leave because they were being loud, but they thought it was a mask issue. That's why they were calling you that because it oh. was it was this last year or whatever, and it wasn't a big deal. But I came out there, and one and Eric, uh, the server, brought out their ticket, and the guy kind of got in Eric's face, and I stood in between them. And the girl was still yelling at you, but then the guy started yelling at me and was like, we weren't talking, you know, this is a mask issue, and, like, yelling at me. We weren't being loud, and I looked him in the face, and I was like, yeah, but now you're out here screaming at us. And he looked at me and was like, 
oh, and then like put his head down. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's time for you to go. And that's my favorite moment when you take that away from them when they're screaming at you and Correct. yelling. And I usually never raise my voice. I did at the Bob Saget show just because the whole weekend was just kind of crazy. On Friday night, we had to kick people out late show. Oh, I didn't hear this. Uh, and it was it was a lady. It was back row. That I think it was a Christmas party that didn't come here, like didn't book this out as a Christmas party. And as they're leaving, they're being loud. I don't even think they're asked to leave. They're just asked to be quiet. They decided to leave. And the lady, as she was leaving, is like, "You just lost a three million dollar account." <laughs> and we're like, "What? <laughs> like what?" <laughs> Right. And I, I was out there. I didn't see everything in here. And then the yeah. girl, the, the servers, all the girls were like, they're not paying their tabs. So I came from the podium and they, and the guy was like pulling the girl and um, I was like, stop. And they're like, we're leaving. And I was, and I yelled back, call the cops. We have their name and, and uh, all their information. And then they came right back off the elevator and were like, we paid. We were at the Christmas party and started yelling at me. Right. And then I got real mad now and because they said something about not coming here. And I was like, good, don't ever fucking come here again. <laughs> and they like looked at me and then the late, then the la that made the lady start crying. And then she was like, oh, I'm a bar. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. She was like, I'm a bartender. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. Get out of here. And then they got on the elevator and I was like, have a good night. And the guy was like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night guys. And uh, that's one of the only times I usually scream I, that I've screamed. I usually, uh, like to take it away from them right. like I did yeah. that and explain right. to them like look at how you're acting right now right. you think we're gonna let you back in there for you're out here screaming at us like we could have maybe had a conversation and then maybe we would have let you back in but you're like literally screaming it's at crazy us. No when way. it gets alcohol induced right yeah. and they want to ruin it for everybody else they don't want to they just are out of control right they just they and yes it's like oh check we gotta reel you in buddy because you don't know how to act 40-year-old women are usually the worst. Oh, they're the worst. <laughs> the this worst. Is true. The true. 40-year-old oh. women are so entitled. This is true. So entitled. We haven't had any of those 40-year-old parties knock on wood no. for Karen's. quite some time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is. Back, before it was a, back before it was called Karen's, that's exactly what they were. That's it indeed. Another great thing you were talking, I guess it kind of goes into how Colleen is good at talking to the guests and the customers. What's funny, and I've heard Daisy say this, Daisy will try to say the same, like, kind of joking or, like, <laughs> things that Colleen does, but they don't go over the same, and then they end up hating Daisy. No. Right. <laughs> it's the craziest the exact same yeah, thing. The exact same thing. She gets so pissed, She'll be too. like, what did I do? <laughs> it's like, I just said what Colleen always says. I know. <laughs> just doesn't, she's doesn't, not Colleen. It doesn't hit the doesn't same. Read doesn't the same always way. work. <laughs> doesn't always work for me, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question on here, and I, I, you've been doing this for so long, maybe there isn't one, but what's the craziest, since we're talking about kicking people out, the craziest moment you can remember of having to kick someone out, maybe that someone did that was super outrageous or that it turned pretty out, outrageous? I mean, I've seen you, and this isn't outrageous, but I've seen you kick people out before the show started because they're in the back <laughs> hammered like making out like yeah. doing like yep. about to fuck me she's a love hater yeah. <laughs> she I says am. it too get a room <laughs> get a room not her room uh well you know here we had like right over here we had um was it the blind guy, the blind guy. yes during the, the during the shrews the table i think i told that story uh that that was you know a pretty wild one yeah. that was um, crazy you know, what a, one of the wildest ones at the old club, I had some young huskers there who had been drinking over at DJ's Dugout, which was across from the old club right. on 114th, doing a lot of shots, came over, and at, at the show, I had a comic out of St. Louis named Joe Marlotti that you guys may not know of, but mm -hmm. uh, Marlotti is still out there, but I think he's doing cruise ships and corporate stuff. Really, really good comic. I had a fun feature named Dan Whitney. Oh, really? And I think the host that night was Jeff McGill, a comic named oh. Jeff McGill. So these guys got really drunk, and, you know, we cut them off. They went outside, and as the show was getting over – Two or three of the guys were standing around somebody's car, peeing on the car. <laughs> and, and this chick came up and went, hey, you're peeing on my car. And her boyfriend's with her. And 
they were drunk enough. They turned around. They had words. Words were spoken. One of the drunk young guys punched the chick. So now oh, the oh guy's shit. on them. So now all this chaos is breaking out. Uh, I've got somebody who runs back in and <laughs> says, uh, there is a riot happening in the parking <laughs> lot. <you know? laughs> and I'm saying to my staff, nobody goes out. Right. We do not get involved. Well, I had a server there. She was kind of feisty and a fighter. And uh, <laughs> she went out and she pulled one of my little dopey door guys out who just would follow her anywhere. So they're <laughs> out there. He gets punched. They practically, they broke his eye socket. Jesus. Oh. All of a sudden, I've got my crew in there, and I've locked the doors. I've got Dan Whitney on this side, Joe Marlotti. People are coming in now. They want to fight with us because they were so crazed. And we have these doors locked and they're up there so we're just kind of waving <laughs> <laughs> it looked like vietnam we had 12 cop cars coming from everywhere there was a helicopter going oh over. shit i mean it was this massive fight riot and it turns out that one of the guys who did the punching his dad was a judge so when oh. all of this came we had to do depositions had to go to court because so many people got punched out knocked out off what happened is somebody going out there was an off-duty cop and oh. when the problem happened he does officer down yes oh. yep so that's where oh. everybody came and <laughs> they were coming from all off dodge so the judge's kids were moved out of state to college somewhere else so <laughs> a lot of this didn't play out but that was a huge one made the papers and it was Huskers? Uh, well, I'm I'm saying they were Husker-minded young okay. guys. <laughs> I, well, yeah. you said they hit a woman, and that would be yes. on, on par for Huskers. Yes. Back in the 90s. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, won't, I won't say the names on air. I will That's not. probably a good idea. Oh, yeah, no, we, we should not I do that. Because they've written books and done a mea copa <laughs> about other things. At St. Patrick's Day long ago, I had the cop thing happened to my friends is we were at uh before it was oscars it was another place out here out west and we were drinking there and i was in the tent and all of a sudden all my friends were gone and i went out and uh what had happened was an off-duty cop who was drunk started a fight with my buddy and i come out of the tent and there's a guy choking my buddy so I come behind the guy, and I'm choking that guy out and pulling him <laughs> off my buddy. And then somebody's like, hey, man, that's a cop. And so I go, whoop. And then I just, like, back away <laughs> into the crowd. And what ended up happening is all my buddies got arrested because they the bar called officer being assaulted yeah. and officer down when this guy was off duty. So just like you said, every cop from yep. everywhere around out here was there within, like, two seconds. And all my buddies, like, got arrested. And it was it was a crazy crazy deal and it, it ended up like a lot of people didn't get charges or maybe probation because some of that came out in court but it was it was a crazy fucking thing that same kind Patrick's of thing yeah Day. well <laughs> and that sounds kind of like the you remember that fight that happened out here during that medicine hat show there was because i was standing out there selling merch with with margie and uh someone comes up and was like hey there's a there's a fight there's a whole bunch of people you know going down there someone's getting the shipied out of them and so, and then uh, two of the other door guys go running by, and I looked at Margie, and she looked at me, and she goes, you probably better go down there. I'm like, all right. So then I go down there, and, and yeah, and this group of people was beating up this one kid, and it was uh, Hugo was there. And so, because Hugo come in and grabbed this dude by his pants and yanked him out of the middle of the, <laughs> of the <laughs> foray, and I grabbed the aggressor dude, and then Nick, you remember the, mm -hmm. and he was down there, and so he's standing there, like, with three or four guys, and he's like, hey, you know, you know, just calm it down. And so then an off-duty officer was walking by. He didn't get involved, but so then he, I don't know if he called, but somebody called 911 and said, hey, there's a fight going on. There's, like, 150 people involved. Because we just let the show out. And right. so then, yeah, we ended oh. up with like nine cop cars. The cops are getting out with their pepper balls and, and their, you know, right. uh, pepper ball rifles and all this stuff. And then by the time they showed up, you know, the three of us already had everything calmed down. And then they ended up taking away a couple of guys. And, and then they got, I think an ambulance came for the dude that got the shit kicked out of him. But yeah, that was a. So, Vinny, were you here the night back in the 300s? 
I don't know if it was a medicine hat show, but we had a guy who had PTSD, and he was kind of wigging out. We went, hey, you got to leave. And he had just gotten back from Afghanistan, we find out later. He left and went down the back hallway and punched holes. Oh, in shit. All the, in the wall, <laughs> going down the back stairs. Were you here that night? No, I had gotten cut that night. I was here that night, and I think I got cut, and I think I went and met up with Jamie Getchman somewhere. And who do you think the comic was? Oh. You, it couldn't have been Hat, because you no, would have been it was cut not for hat. hat. No, it was not Hat. I don't remember who it was, because I remember that dude took a swing on another one of the door guys, Luke. Right. And he took a swing on him, and he didn't hit him. But yeah, then he went down the back, and we found out that when he was punching holes in the wall, he was like two inches away from hitting a steel beam. Right. It would have shattered his fist from punching it. His, oh, Jesus. He was with his folks, yeah. and maybe a brother and a girlfriend, and it was his first time, and he just went PTSD. Yeah. And he had been drinking, and he hadn't and been drinking And whatever right, the right. comic was saying, it I rubbed don't. him wrong. Oh. He was told to be quiet and quit yelling out. He took a swing at, I don't know if, who was our crazy red-headed doorman? Uh, it wasn't Dwayne. It wasn't Dwayne? That no, night. I think it was Luke. And... Anyway, it it was a really bad scene, and then we just get him out into the back hall and just go, hey, exit this way, because just don't even want to show you how much farther to go that way, even yeah. though the show wasn't over. So when he went down there, he did that. Of course, we had his name right. and did all that, and I do remember that because it was the back hallway, it was Village Point office oh, right. territory and this whole scene, so we get give him his name, et cetera, and he is contacted. And the parents just did, they pleaded, look, he just got back. He needs some right. psych work. Some, There's yeah. all yeah. this kind of stuff. So they didn't press charges, but that guy and his brother came, and they drywalled and painted. No way. They oh, really? They let them come and drywall and paint the back staircase. No way. I didn't know that bit. Yes. Instead of hiring a company, they made it they right. Hmm. Well, that's good that he came back and did. Yes. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, has yeah. A good, that story has a great ending. Yeah, it, it did. <laughs> and it did. Well, I don't think he ever came back. If he did, he never never acted yeah. up again. Never acted up again. But I, I can't that's remember. Crazy. I wish I knew no, the comic yeah, I don't that remember set him who off. It, it's just it, that that's just one of those you just go, oh, gal, gal, people. Uh, at the old club, we had a really huge men's room, and guys kept. I don't know. You know, it was back. It was a rowdier time. Yeah. And yes. Medicine yes. Hat was would tend to rile people up. And so it was a lot of <laughs> shots of Jack and beer and craziness. And who knows what else people were imbibing in before they came into the club. Right. But I had five or six urinals in the men's room. And every week we'd go, son of a Somebody would stand there while they're taking a leak and just punch a hole in, right? <laughs> what? what? So then I put cork board <laughs> over everything, uh -huh. and they'd pick that off and still punch through. <laughs> and then I had one of my guys go in there, and when they were for the sixth time repairing drywall, they went, oh, we're just going to put boards in there. We're going to put nails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't know. Watch us get sued for that. No kidding. Uh, watch us get sued. It, it was a constant thing that... It's, That's crazy. They that is just crazy. thought it was so much fun to punch a hole in the wall while they were standing there. Get rid of that testosterone. And you guys didn't have like a drink minimum at the no. old club, or you had nothing like that no. where it's like you were, they had to drink so much. No, and we didn't, we don't have one here either, Vinny. Well, I didn't say we did, but I'm just saying. But no, we didn't. Uh, we they, don't have people they, punching holes in the walls here. They, well, in the bathrooms anyways. They, there was. <laughs> Not yet. Before, <laughs> don't before you fucking do Ubers it. Ubers <laughs> and all of that, people, people were good drinkers. Yeah. They were really good drinkers. You know, I had a guy at a medicine hat show that this is kind of one of those legendary stories that uh, the show's over, His fr everybody leaves. His friends just thought, you know, he had wandered out an hour beforehand. Well, I like the story. He was in the handicap stall of the men's room on the can, passed out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and his friends just left him because they went, oh, you know, I, I, I think his name was Doug. Doug is gone. So all I can tell you is that, you know, lock up, 
go home. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm getting a phone call from the security people saying, alarms are off, there's somebody inside the funny bone. And I went, wow. What did they break? Can you tell? Did they go through the front door, right. the back door, a side door? And they're going, no, but there's an alarm going off, and we've already notified the cops. Well, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and my son Dan was home from college. And I went, Dan, I, I get him up. I'm not going down to 114th Street right. at 3 a.m. <laughs> we're, we're down there, and here's two cop cars. And we pull up, and here's the big front glass of, of the doors. And... They have their lights shining. There's a guy sitting on the floor with his back against the ticket booth wall just waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sitting there waving. Because we didn't have the kind of doors that would push and out. You were locked in. Right, right, yeah. right. And But he was walking all over in there, and the alarms went off. So I unlocked the door, and he goes, I think I fell asleep on the can. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the cops are like, what do you want to do? And I went, oh. and, and, and then it was so funny that they were – he had to call his mom to come and pick him up. <laughs> he was like 25 years old. Had to call his mom to pick him up because he was still too drunk. Didn't have a car there. <laughs> and so it was just like, well, this is a first. That's crazy. <laughs> and the cops are kind of laughing. And I go, whew, all right. Well, that, that was charming. So then three days later, we're kind of talking. His friends called up Todd and Tyler and busted yeah. him and told the whole story. <laughs> and eventually they got him to call up and say, yeah, I had a little too much to drink that night, and I passed out in the handicap can, and yeah, I'm real sorry. <laughs> but, you know, nothing <laughs> was crazy. damaged. Right. <laughs> he just is sitting there waving at me, and I went, well, this isn't scary. <laughs> well, and you called in, because I remember listening, and you called in a Todd and Tyler and told them, hey, this is what's going on. <laughs> right. I, I was like, I had to go to the club, and, and they were like, right. well, what, what happened? And you're like, he's just sitting there waving, and yeah. the cops were like, come on out. And he's like, I can't. I'm locked in. Yeah, and he was locked in. <laughs> yeah. And so they're calling. I remember hearing that story <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> His friends just left him. And yeah. so and so because of that story, I remember shortly after I started, Colleen's like, go check the bathrooms. Yes, and I was like, all the time. What? All She's the like, time. Go check the bathrooms. Go in every stall. Make but sure there's didn't, nobody uh, in there. Kenny from the kitchen. Kenny yeah. got locked in the bathroom here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's a he doesn't count. He's not a customer. <laughs> Kenny set the alarm off, yeah. Because <laughs> we did. left him in the bathroom. And he did. <laughs> oh, there was one uh, Friday night where you broke the cardinal rule. You let, you followed a customer out to, get, to pay their bill, and I, I grabbed Jason Ingram. I was like, let's go, because I was like, well, I don't know I what's going to happen. Was he but the, uh, Yes. Oh, okay. it, we, it was a while. It was when I first started. I was oh, okay. so pissed. And she, was, and she followed him oh. out, and I didn't, I didn't even know. I just saw her. I saw them go, and then I I saw her walk and then I was like Jason let's go Colleen's headed to the parking lot and so we ran down there with her the people paid but they were they were being dicks because they didn't have change the funniest part and I think I've told this before is Steve Gillespie came out of the bushes from the movie theater he was like spying on us and he's like I have change and just like made change <laughs> for him and we went back inside and there was no incident <laughs> And I'll never, I'll never forget because I was like, "Where the fuck did this guy come from?" Like Gillespie. <laughs> we only know what he was doing out there. I know, right? <laughs> we can only guess. <laughs> we can only guess. But no, what a long, strange ride it's been. Um, I still enjoy the misfit clowns that come through. Uh, I think it's very gratifying to stand in the back of the room with a different, with different shows and just look around and see. We have a melting pot of people. We've got all flavors, all religions, all beliefs in, in who we should vote for, and they can all just unite and laugh at the same joke. Yes, yep. it's and the best. It's, it's just, that part is really good because we need so much more of that. Yes, to we do. just level us out. Remember, we all kind of want the same goal just to raise our kids and be healthy and be happy and not uh, get rid of a little stress. Right. And that's what a comedy club can still do, as well as being the last bastion of free speech. That's right. They I quote you on that all the time. They can still get away with a lot more said on this stage, and we can say it here where it's not as... Uh, Hopefully, suable. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> As it would be if, you know, we were working at Super Target or, <laughs> or Verizon and, and came up with that. But, 
No, it's still it, it's still just interesting to see what's going to happen each week. Never bored. Never. So it never a dull no. moment. Never bored. Never know what never you're going to see. Never what see you next. And yeah, it's uh, it's always an adventure every weekend for sure. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is. And it's fun to have uh, comics come in and surprise you. You know. Yes. Just to see how somebody has grown and go, wow, they uh, they've stepped it up. And you can tell you the know, ones that are telling the same jokes for the last fifteen years. Right, right. <laughs> that you can uh, fool them once. How, about <laughs> how many times you can fool them? <laughs> they will definitely try. But no, it's been fun. I I so enjoy, and it's uh, you know it's it's such a team effort. You know, yes. I, I can't do it alone you know it, it's not just like it's me the club is all of us right it's all of us and it's the people who come and keep you know we have some great customers that come down all the time that just really you know some that you go oh god it's them again but they <laughs> like comedy right and right i appreciate that and it's you know just we talked about that couple once. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, there's multiple. <laughs> there's multiple. Yeah. We need them it's to come back and, and keep supporting us. <laughs> it's kind of like string and beads with no knot at the end. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good analogy. Yeah. You get this pretty little <laughs> string of beads and it all falls out and we start all over That's again. Right. Yep. Each well, week. I told like Medicine Hat used to get worried about you know people coming to a show. He's like, oh, they're getting played out. People aren't coming. I was like, I said Jay, people turn twenty one every, every day, right? And there's always somebody that wants to come right. out to the show and and you know come out here. Like there was some girl on Friday night when I filled in. Uh, there was some girl it was her twenty first right, birthday the day right. before, and yep. you know she and was she was excited, here with her family and excited to be here. Yeah, and it's a, a fun thing to do with uh, adult kids. Right. Exactly. It's really, a f- I, I think it's a fun thing to do. I wish I would have had that to do with my kids. Right. Like, you know, we do do it. Right. As they got older and we traveled, we'd go to comedy clubs and it would be uh, just a fun thing because as I like to say, thanks for not going to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that on Friday hair. too. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's what I told her. <laughs> that's what I told her. Except and when uh, Jr. is here, he does a little oh chunky yes. cheese. cheese. Yeah. Yes. Yes, he does. Jr. <laughs> Browski does that, <laughs> and well, quite well. And you know, this place does run so well. And every, I mean, you ask any comic that comes through, you know, and it it does all start at the top with you. I mean, just the way that you you treat us, the way that you you know get everybody together, the way you inspire everyone, the way that you motivate us to just keep you know doing the stuff that we do here, because you know. We, I hear stories from comics all the time about how, you know, these other clubs, how there's always turnover or, you know, the management just doesn't appreciate even them coming in and doing, I mean, even the little things that you do, uh, you know, or even, you know, just normal expecting, you know, like having a microphone and having lights and, you know, basic stuff that other clubs can't do. So, you know, I mean, every, you know, you ask anybody and everyone will, you know, attribute to the success to uh, one of the major successes to this club, uh, you know, starting with you. Oh, for thanks, sure. Thanks, Vinny. Thanks. I mean, and you're so one of the main reasons I've been here for 17 years. Yeah. You know, I mean, same I here. I thought you just liked the dick joke. <laughs> 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 so you could tell them at your real job. Come on, guys. That's an added bonus. <laughs> <laughs> really? You can shock them. <laughs> There's only a few people at work, th- th- my day job, that I can tell some of the jokes that I've heard here from. True. Most of them, I'm just like, oh, yeah, they're funny. Oh, right. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> so true. <laughs> But no, it's 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 a uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be able to just kind of be a part of entertaining the the Metro Omaha yeah. and letting it spread out. It's just people need to take a break. They need That's to right. take a break, and I think we offer that. Yep, we for definitely sure. do. We are a, a good way to offer that. And as far as treating the comics, it's. They are some of the finest people I've met, you know, yeah. just interesting, unique, quirky. And I can't imagine if clubs don't treat them with some respect and, and you know, just take care of some of the, the little minor niceties. Yeah. Why would anybody want to give you 110% on stage? Right. Because that's where the money is. Right. That's where, that's all these people 
are coming to see that. We just help put it together. And I'm told time and time again that comics just go, you have the best staff. You have the best staff because my staff enjoys them. They're nice to them. They talk to them. They're curious. They'll hang, you know, anything people want. You know, if they want to go fishing or if they want to know where to go and eat or go to the zoo, we make sure it all happens. Yep. And it's just so minor to do that. I'm always amazed when comics come in and go, I roll into a major city and they don't even ask when I'm coming in. They expect me to take my own Uber or taxi. <laughs> to oh, the really? I got to call the club to find out what hotel I'm at. You know, there's just no Crazy. preliminary taking care of right. where Basics. they're going to stay, let alone telling them, you know, I'm that's interesting. That's crazy. At the beginning of the week, I'm emailing either the management, the agent, or the comic if I know them. Going, here's who's picking you up. This is the show time. This is the hotel you're staying at. Uh, you know, just things like that. This is the media you're doing. This call in, or I'm picking you up. Then, just getting it all and waiting to be acknowledged that they received it. So then I can go. Okay, this is going to be a little smoother than right. But some of these guys will wait until, you know, it's Thursday, and I'm going, hello, do I know when you're coming in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, some are, are a little lazy, lackadaisical, but that's where I push. I push them to step up on it. And some of them are probably new and green, you know, like, like we talked about some of these YouTube people that they don't know right. what they're doing. They're, you know, right. winging it. They're doing it for the first time. And so, you know, I mean, I, you know, guys like, we talked about Ed Bassmaster. You know, he came in, and I'm sure he, I'm sure he loved and, and got as much info from this club and the experience and right. and uh, all the information you would provide him as he could because it's only going to make it easier for him down the road. Right. Maybe he'll yep. learn from w it. Yes. And hone that little act. I mean, look at we all were witness to somebody who was a YouTube sensation that was off the charts. Chelsea Lynn. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, she was. Trailer Park, Trailer Park Tammy. Tammy. Yeah. I so mean, I have never seen somebody she's with awesome as huge following. Oh wow! Rabid fans, yeah, uh, buying up every bit of merch they could. They, and so and rabid. Somebody who was still, yeah. uh, yes, trying to get an act together. Yes, but so beloved, and good for her. Yeah, good for her, man. She, I'd love to have her come back. Sure. Absolutely, <laughs> I mean, it was hilarious. It was awesome. Oh yeah, it was, it was hilarious. Awesome. And, and she's such know, a nice, such a nice she lady. She was yes. so great just to have you know. Her whole crew was awesome. Her yeah, everybody, yeah, that everybody she with her was her so fun nice. Fun fans who were amazed that we had indoor plumbing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was like yeehaw. And when she came, we were at lower capacity. Yes. So imagine filling this room. I can't even I imagine. Mean, yeah. We could have blow the it. roof off oh, with, the, <laughs> with how loud, loud that, that was. Yeah, oh, we God. talked about that a couple of times. She she had rock star stuff set up out there. It was like yeah. her yes. at a rock concert. Yeah, that her sister was merching at. She it sure was did. Amazing, just amazing. Yeah, so good for her. Love to have her back. And you know, the first time Mr. D came, Joe Dombrowski, he mm -hmm. had that kind of. Oh. Yes, he did. Yeah, but everybody was gaga over him. The teachers, the teachers the love teachers Mr. D. The teachers love Mr. D. <laughs> that they do. So I'm sure we've got some more down the line. Who knows? Maybe our next TikTok person is going to <laughs> <come> <laughs> <in>. <laughs> just be gangbusters. You never know. People are buying tickets because of his TikTok. That's right. Uh, He's selling out rooms because of it soon. Hashtag good liquid for death. You. <laughs> good for you, Tyler Walsh. I fucked my whole TikTok up while we were just now. <laughs> yeah. I, had to, I saw he wasn't I know, right? I forever. had to delete it with eleven thousand views because I put a music on, and now I'm just like, oh, my career's over. No. Yeah. So we witnessed the fall of Tyler's yeah, TikTok in career in like five minutes. Don't do that. Easy come, yeah. easy go. Uh, I'm Don't gonna have to start wearing that. steel toe boots to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you boys. You want to read a couple new emails that we got and then let's sure. wrap this baby up? That sounds good. Let me. I had it pulled up. Where did it we go? had, I got the guys. Adam has sent us a couple and I'm going to send you a t shirt, Adam, because he said he made it through our uh, D, D episode. And so I congratulated him about that. We have t shirts? Oh, uh, we are going to. I asked him for a size. <laughs> <laughs> I know where to make them. <laughs> 
Uh, actually, uh, as while we've been recording this episode, Adam responded back to us. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So let me uh, start back. Uh, where's the? Oh, he had said Happy New Year's, everyone. Uh, it, he had been catching up on all the old podcasts and uh, hadn't listened to the D and D one, but now he has. <laughs> uh, he said he heard Ty Walsh talking about uh, shotgun genies that used to be in uh, Hamburg, Iowa. And he can confirm that place was Trashy AF. <laughs> and he was there once with his... That's a bar you were talking about? Strip club. Strip club? Strip club, because he was there uh, with his seven buddies, and the strippers outnumbered him that night. <laughs> <laughs> and <after> t- <laughs> and uh, yeah, he said uh, it was very nasty, uh, uh, the strippers. They uh, offered uh, some extra favors, and they chose to uh, not partake. Um, Sounds like strippers. Yes. Uh, oh, he did also say that he has, he's ashamed to admit that he's never actually been uh, in o- to the Funny Bone in Omaha, but he says he'll make it here eventually. You should come out sometime, Adam. Because how far away does he live? I don't know. Uh, his address he sent us is in Lincoln. Oh, well. That's not that far, no. Adam. No, we get Lincoln people make it here all yeah. the time. But while we were uh, podcasting, he said, uh, yeah, he said, uh, he said that'd be awesome. He wasn't expecting anything. He's happy to hear that we are recording stuff for the podcast. And he was actually wondering if we decided to quit doing it. And uh, no, we didn't quit. Uh, we just had holidays and family things. And uh, Davis's household decided to become a Petri dish for right. in- infestation. Yeah. My Rona. wife's pregnant and we're sick and not pregnant sick anymore, but real sick. And <laughs> f- I think I'm finally good. I think we're all good. And that's why lots we're finally of, here. Lots of vitamin C. Yeah. Feel, feeling great today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we tried to do this episode with Colleen before the holidays, and uh, then Davis had to call it off. Yep. So I'm super right. glad yeah, we got to that's right. get this on. It's on me, you guys. <laughs> and now we're reset, and you should, get, you should get a new episode uh, every Thursday this year. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal, right? <laughs> I do say a lot of things that uh, do not come true. <laughs> uh, we got one more it's email. Okay, Scott. <laughs> An older email uh, we got before Christmas uh, from a guy named Troy. And he said that he recently moved uh, from Omaha to northeast Colorado, and he just listened to Ty Walsh talk about rat racing near Sterling, Colorado. (laughs) He said he needs to know the town the rat race happened in because he'll most likely end up working in that town. I cannot reveal the actual (laughs) Can we email him the town? Because of PETA or what? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when those wait, guys but do they protect rat? I mean, are rats a protected? I, I feel like everyone hates rats. They were mice. They were pet store mice. Uh, oh, feeders. Still, yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure most people. I would say ninety. When the principal more. called me over to tell me about this, he said, "Now there's gray areas." <laughs> 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 So, yeah, so maybe we'll have to uh, reply back to Troy with some information. Okay. Yeah, maybe we uh, don't say it on here. But. <laughs> Tell him just to follow your TikTok. And there you maybe, go. There maybe you it'll go. be disclosed. Yeah. Yeah, you want to give out your TikTok handle on yeah. here? Sure, I got a oh, Tyler Walsh comedy. There you That's go. That's what it is. Had to think about it? Yeah, I did. I'm surprised you don't have that thing tattooed on your forearm. I'm tired. I'm dieting. All He's I can super mad about, right now, too, about his TikTok. All I can think about is eating a bag of licorice on the way home when we get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I love licorice. You do? That's red or black? Red. Oh. It replaced weed for me after comedy shows. <laughs> you got it. Now I go get a pound of licorice and just slam it all huh. the way home, which is not... I think weed's probably better. Than <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know uh, the science on this. But. No, it's like you've got the munchies without the weed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little backwards. <laughs> Tyler is a little backwards. Yeah, well, so don't they say when people quit drinking, they get way into sugar? Yes. Because I quit yep. that too. Yes. So I think um, yes. I never ate sugar before really. And no, now I just want to eat anything sweet all the time. Yeah, that's... that's uh, was that hmm. sugar you were pouring on that chicken you were eating earlier? <laughs> over there? No. <laughs> hey, I got your sweet over here, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Special? Yesterday, my plan was to put, I was supposed to just, my parents said, get, you know, the honey thing where you're supposed to put a spoonful of honey in your coffee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And jump start. So I bought a thing of, I was like, oh, I'll put a scoop on this plain Greek yogurt. 
And then I ate the whole container of honey. Oh. <laughs> the Greek yogurt. I was like, I don't think this is better. That's I not the right just way. Get no. sugar. You got a little imbalance going there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say. I totally have an addictive personality where I'm like, oh, no I'm way. Eat all this. Wow. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it at all. Well, knowing it is half the battle. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Colleen, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much, This has Colleen. been awesome. We really appreciate it. Fun Fun to times see you always. Guys off, uh, always. Made our number 50 even that yeah, more special. 50 and That's 50. right. Woo. That's right. Uh, you can email us and we can read your emails on the <laughs> That's right. Door guys pod at yahoo.com. And Tyler, you got any other things you want people to follow? Any other handles or anything? No, Tyler Comedy on everything? Yeah, pretty much. Tyler Walsh Comedy. My All Instagram's right. linked to my TikTok. All right. Check and if, if you've got a complaint about a show, the seating, food, or a manager's attitude, please email Tyler Walsh Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo.com and just let him know what the problem is. And I will send you Daisy Curtis's phone number. <laughs> 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 Say goodbye to Tyler. <laughs> and this is Tyler's last episode? Yep. That's it. He'd be dead. He went out on number 50. He's gone. Her brothers will take you out. <laughs> thank you, Liquid Death. <laughs> yes, thank you, Liquid Death. We love you. Nice.